Thank you. Thank you. The applause, I think, is really due to our faculty and our staff. And I would like to ask all faculty and staff to stand up because we are here not because of me, because we are here because of your work and your dedication. This is a wonderful day for us, and I really want to thank you all for coming here. It's a marker in a long evolution of successful planning and discovery and also of service. We are a user facility, which means it's not just about us. It is about serving users and allowing users to do their experiments successfully. That's what we are. That's the culture which we've established, and that is the path on which we are. That is very important for both the National Science Foundation and also for the Department of Energy's mission. And we hope that we can extend our partnership, which we have had successfully over the years with the National Science Foundation, with the Department of Energy, and have actually all three, MSU, NSF, and DOE, work together towards a common goal to build a brighter future for science. We had a good year, we had lots of discovery, we produced new isotopes, we discovered new properties of new isotopes, we trained new students, and we have successfully completed the construction of this experimental hall, which will lay the foundation for research for the next five to 10 years. We hope to expand that. And we have been successful in realizing our vision that we would like to be the next generation user facility for the country in rare isotope research and AFRIP. And we are particularly pleased that we had the cooperative agreement for AFRIP signed this week. So we are now more than a glimpse of hope. We are a project in the beginning, and we will do our very best to make this project a success. It is a particular pleasure to introduce James Simons. James has received his degree from Oxford University, and he had joined Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in 1977. That was the year when I was departing, but we, I was very fortunate that for a number of years, our careers were going in parallel, and we did a lot of research together. And you see here just a little palette of papers which we both published. I want to point out that one of those papers, actually, I considered a seminal paper where we investigated the, the fragmentation of calcium-48 and in one night produced 14 new isotopes which had never been observed before. It was one of the seminal papers and it took a while for us to build new machines, new capabilities, but it was a, I think it was a very nice uh, collaboration and I would, would like to thank James for his collegiality and for, for being such a great partner in science for many years. James is a fellow of the American Physical Society He's been the chairman of the Nuclear Science Advisory Committee. He was actually the person in charge of developing together with the community the long-range plan in 2002, which laid the foundation for AFRIP in its predecessor form, RIA, the more expensive and uh, more ambitious project. And I think he has also been defending the science and making hard choices in what should a downsized facility look like. He led the task force. Uh, for the facility of rare isotope beams and define the specifications, what is needed for the country to carry the science forward. James uh, has been involved in nuclear structure research and he's also been involved in relativistic heavy ion physics, an entirely different field of nuclear science uh, which is being pursued both at the, at the, at the uh, Brookhaven Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider and also at CERN. James has been a science leader, and he will give us an idea about the context of AFRIP and the whole science picture. James, thank you very much.